the Scarlet succumbed to Munster last week, Sean. Perhaps guilty of going a little too wide too early, not direct enough against what was a, an aggressive blitz defence from Munster. The Blues will have studied that tape, you can guarantee that. What will they try and do differently tonight? You're right, Ross. Munster thrive on the turnover. There'll be a lot more territory in the game tonight from Danny's men, and Matt Sherrod's a big part of that. And there's a number of ways of getting territory. You know, last week uh, you saw a loose kick from Duncan Weir. Look at George Earl coming back, and Matt Sherrod would coach this. Some good counter attack playing from the kicking game. Uh, it's the halfway line, so they feel they've earned the right to, to, to attack you. And it's a great little screen ball from George Earl. Steve Shingler comes from depth, hidden, and the line break gets in. Now he gets to the 22 and gets the territory. The Blues scored four tries from within the opposition's 22 last week, and there'll be some territory battles there tonight. Yep, looking forward to this one. This is the region's highest try scorer. He's added a couple more to his tally tonight, Sean. And Munster almost at sixes and sevens for that first try, and the Blues just showing a real clinical edge. Well, I said at the top of the show, when you go to Munster, you can always expect a kicking battle, almost a Gaelic football-type game. And the Blues try uh, from Tom James was a classic example, as we showed last week with the shingler break. They go to the air, Munster. It's a great offload, and this guy's having a good game. He had a good season last year. He has a, a lethal step, and they're off and running. Dace, he's a loose player. He's a good player, but Tom James looking sharp. And this was a warning sign for Munster. They need to clear their lines, and they didn't in this case. Look how the Blues players are back with intent. The wingers are involved. Dan Fish is involved. There were some lovely interplay, as you rightly said, following this, and in a great attacking phase play. Now, what I like is Tom James identifies a mismatch with Scanlon, the hooker. You want your players to be doing this all of the time. He identifies it, he backs himself, he takes him on. It's a great try and a great start for the Blues, Ross. Yep, that's the way all good wingers should Both play. teams, Sean, employing similar tactics when it comes to the kicking game. A lot of ball going high up in the air, a lot of contestable kicks. Mm. Danny Wilson saying maybe Munster were edging that battle, and it was a, a clever kick that led to their, their only try. Yeah, and there's a variety of kicks that you coach as well. Some in the little angle between the fullback and the winger, and Munster went a little bit more aerial, and it paid dividends for them early on in the half. A high contest with Nick Williams, and any loose ball like this, and Munster sees on it. Keatley was clever in this one. Look how Tom James has to spot up and take the space because there's numbers on the outside. It's a great kick from Keatley. It's no man's land for Dan Fish in that zone area and anything can happen with the bounce. It's great reaction from Conway, the guy we've highlighted, because he never gives up on this. He's always tracking and it's a great offload. So they were straight back in the game. But it's a, a cagey kick in battle, Ross. It is, isn't it? And, and Rob, you made the point as well. Some dramatic omissions from the squad. But you look at that list, you do the maths... Luke Charteris isn't on it. We thought maybe he was going to be. Um, Falato, you'd assume, is safe. George North, you'd assume, is a wild card. So too Jamie Roberts. Yeah. Reese Priestman, therefore, by the process of elimination, must be the most vulnerable. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? I, I just think we need a little bit of clarity around it, Ross. I think we're all a little bit confused. It's been threatened to be used over the last couple of seasons. Nice for Rob Holy to pick it up, isn't it, <laughs> in the autumn? <laughs> but, um, yeah, a little bit confusing, but you're right, you know, how can you leave George North, Jamie Roberts and uh, Toby Falata with the Welsh team? Very difficult. I, th I think it's... Both back out on the Musgrave Park pitch. Uh, before we cross back to Cork, though, Sean, quick word from you. Can the Blues hold on to this lead? Yes, they can. Danny and Matt will be saying half-time more of the same, you know. Don't let them into the game with silly turnovers, you know. There's no need to risk anything. The plan is working. More of the same? Good stuff. We shall see. 40 minutes for the Blues to hold and, uh, on to this. Knowing Munster as we do, when they get themselves ahead at home, they tend to keep all of the ball and not let, let you get a sniff. But that try from Dan Fish, real evidence that the Blues are still willing to chuck everything at it this season. Yeah, again, it was from an, uh, a kick, receiving a kick, and they show they got some depth, you know. Matthew Morgan is a magic player, as I said, in, in the game, and this was his first touch, and it's, it's not a loose kick, but just his footwork and his speed, you see Keighley thinks he's got him here, but that a pace he has takes him away. Now, Sweetenham has to commit, and it creates a little bit more space outside. Credit Dan Fish got back in the game um, to be on the end of it. Look at the support play and the depth of support. It's a great finish. Hurt himself in the process. But that little bit of magic, bit of depth, changed it up after enduring all that pressure from Munster. You know, it shows a lot of character. I'm really proud of the coaching team, Ross, because they've got buy-in. They complement one another, Matt Sherrod and Danny, and uh, uh, you know to go there and dispel a bit of a mystique about going to Munster and winning, mm. they've done that now, and they, they should take great confidence in it. And a word on Dan Fish, he's been a, a tireless Glasgow. Um, 
if that wasn't the winning moment, Sean, then surely it was a classic Sam Warburton turnover when Munster appeared to be getting back into it. Yeah, it was good to see, wasn't it? He was blowing a bit, but, you know, this is what he does best. Look how wide his base is, his feet are apart, his knees are almost on Munster. It was a crucial turnover, and you need your big players to have big moments. Gethin Jenkins had one as well earlier with Navidi, which stopped the Munster attack. So it's, that's good to see. They'll need that later in the season. A couple of uh, other full-times to update you on. We know uh, the Dragons eventually triumphed over Zebra tonight.